50 linemen in there going to Utah going for that to, yeah. blowdown. You know? yeah, yeah. It was crazy. That's coincidental. I had 37 with, with aerospace. Too. Okay, so yeah. It seems to be a magic number. It is, it is. So. I think our bodies say, okay, that's it's enough. Time. It's time. It's time. Well, you, you, you know, it's kind of like, ah, do I, do I, no. I, like it's I got them all. I don't know. So far, so good. I've been. And, and White River's a co op. It's not yeah, like, it is. It's not like yeah. the. Uh, yeah. A little bit different than the Liberty. Because like uh, uh, my mom was part of Semino. And when she died, I still get some of those capital yeah, checks. Yeah, when they, um, it's a little, yeah, yeah, they'll keep coming as long as you And you guys it. do the same thing? Yes, indeed. So, so what, what is that? Is that. It's a return capital. Yeah, yeah, so basically part of the. Jamie, are you waiting for me to call the meeting? I was just waiting for Chad. I'm sorry, just giving him a little bit of time. Okay. I'll be happy to call the order and take a roll call. Thank you. We can do that. Well, let's, uh, I don't have my, it doesn't make much noise doing that way, but yeah, I've got to start call to order. I'd like to start, though, with a prayer. Uh, if you all would uh, just sit where you are and just join me for a moment, please. Lord, we just thank you that we can stop and seek your direction. We thank you that you give us the gifts that we have. We thank you for this place that we call home, this whole area in these Ozark Mountains. We appreciate their beauty. We love the people here. We just thank you for the gifts you've given to us. But we seek to do the financial side of our city of Branson. And we've done it with care, concern. And we continue to seek your direction as we move forward. But we just ask you to bless us today. Bless us more than normal. That we come through and make good decisions and see what you want us to do and how you want us to be involved. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Roll call, please. I'm calling budget and finance first. Akers? Here. Dobbins? Here. Milton? Romine? Here. Simmons? Here. Yancey? Here. Mary, you have a quorum. Thank you. I'm calling Capital Improvement Committee. Akers? Here. Buckley? Here. Dobbins? Here. King? Here. Pinkley? Here. Mary, you have a quorum. Thank you. Begin with a special presentation by Ms. Jimmy Roush. Thank you and good morning. Um, so I wanted to start off today. What we're going to do today is we created a budget magazine like we typically do in years past. And for this committee, I wanted to make sure that you all had the information and the knowledge and the thoughts that we had as we were putting this document together so that for the next uh, budget meeting that you all will attend on September the 24th, the major budget meeting that we have the entire board, we'll be going through a different PowerPoint and some more in detail. But I wanted you all to have the knowledge that um, we used to create this so that you would be able to um, support or ask me questions or uh, tell me that you think it should have been done differently, whatever, that, that this is a discussion today for us um, so that I can make sure that the direction that we have used is the right one. Okay, so the first thing is the budget magazine. And we chose this cover, and I want, I want you to look at this cover. And this is a real picture that was taken in the city of Branson, which I... Melissa took this picture and I thought it was pretty amazing and I thought it spoke volumes because there's a beautiful flower growing right out of and right off of a tree that has seen better days. And when we were choosing our pictures, I just thought this is not just a picture for this city, it's for the entire world right now because in this year of the pandemic and all of these things that this whole entire world is facing, the flower presents hope and it presents hope for the future. And I think this city is doing fantastic. Um, when I say fantastic, I mean in comparison to some of the cities that we have seen or had to try to help and those kind of things. 
uh, we should be thankful. Even though we are presented with challenges, and we're going to go through that today, many challenges, and, the, and you'll see the assumptions and those kind of things, um, this presents a picture of what we could do, and, and the, the decisions that we make are extremely important for the hope of the future for Branson. So I thought the cover was just beautiful, and I thought we, when we picked this picture, it was just perfect. So some of you may have been wondering, well, why did she put a dead tree out there? <laughs> um, I did. But it, there's a purpose for that picture. If you don't like it, just let me know. We'll change it. But I wanted to share it with you all since we're discussing this today. And then there's just pictures of various things, various activities, um, the rainbow over the the Ferris wheel uh, that is a promise, that presents a promise too. So there are so many things in the pictures that we presented today represent our city, the beauty of our city, the importance of our city, and the safety of our city. Here is the, um, the contents, and this is what we're going to go down through today. Um, if I speak too quickly, let me know. If you have any questions, just feel free to stop me. It's the same thing that we always do. We're gonna, it's more of a discussion today, um, question and answer than anything. Okay, so here's the timeline. So um, this timeline looks better when presented in uh, magazine form because you can see it all pieced together. But here's the timeline as we started. We started uh, back in June. Um, and really, it starts with the department heads putting together their budget. Um, we send out the instructions. Um, we send out the timelines. We send out those. And then the department heads, they go to work on their own budget. And then they present to us. And then eventually, I'm just going to um, just make this go pretty quickly. Eventually, what happens is uh, they turn it, their budgets over to us. We have those meetings stand. Um, the department heads meet with um, the city administrator, the assistant city administrator, and myself, and we talk about their budgets and we go through it. Um, and then after that, we get to work on trying to balance it. And what I mean by balancing it um, is the operating revenues against the operating expenditures uh, should go to zero. And if, we, if we're able to manage the revenues and expenditures to zero, then that helps us long term. Okay? And so that's what we, that's our role that we play. But the department has really got to work for 21 and 22, I will say, and presented um, the budgets and the operating budgets. This year was a little bit more difficult as we were faced with the COVID, the COVID financial, as everybody is, right? So uh, it was a little bit more challenging. Um, as you all are aware, just as a reminder, uh, in the COVID financials, we said um, the taxes were, we estimated or projected a, taxes to decrease by 45%. Uh, that was tourism, that was sales tax. Now I think what's happening as we move forward in the year, which is a good thing, I think what's going to happen is you're not going to see the sales tax decline by 45%. I think the sales tax is going to be better than what we anticipated, which what is what we're hoping for. And I, and I believe that based on some of the projections and things that we're seeing for this year, I believe that the tourism may come right in at 45% decline may be even a tad bit better. That is all based upon the Christmas season and how well the Christmas season does. So we are hopeful because Christmas here is beautiful and um, most people want to bring their families to Branson for Christmas. So um, that's where the hope comes from. And so those projections are based off of uh, COVID, uh, the financials, and then what we did was we kind of stair-stepped us out of that. So we know that um, 2021 probably is not going to come back to full swing. It's not predicted to do that anywhere in this economy right now. And so what we needed to do was we needed to find common ground to stair-step us back into um, full swing. And that's what we did with 21 and 22. And we'll show you that as we walk through it, okay? I just kind of wanted to prepare you in advance for what we were going to be looking at. And there's the end of the timeline. And, and this is the um, September 10th meeting, and this is where we present the budget for the first time to you all. And then on September 24th, um, we will all get together, um, the whole board, um, this whole committee, and we will get together and go through it, and we'll go through the all of the assumptions, which I'm going to try to hit on today, all of the assumptions, 
um, the question and answers, and then that is the day that Mike will also present the um, water sewer rate um, module as well. Same thing as we do last year, but we'll go through it in more detail. And then what we'll do is we'll take it to the board for first reading um, at the end of October, the t October 27th meeting, and the first reading in November will be the second reading of the budget. And then it'll be set to go for January 1. I know most of you know that. It was just I wanted to provide you a little bit of history against the timeline. And this is just the director's note. Um, this covers, you know, just some of the things that we see and, and some of our recommendations um, that we're looking for. And we have the responsibility to work through all the challenges, as anyone does, and implement sustainable and ongoing solutions. Um, and once you've read that, if you uh, have any questions or concerns about it, feel free to give me a call. So I'm going to start today with the general fund and the assumptions. Um, this, the assumptions in gold are for 2020. And I think I just covered that with the 45% down. Um, we did that all across the board uh, for all of the taxes. How we came up with that, I've already presented that to you all, but we looked at the five months of the largest activity um, and wanted to see, well, if we had no five months of activity here, can we still be sustainable? The answer was yes. So we had to cut things. We had to cut capital. We had to cut internal service fund. We had to cut some of the things um, as everyone did. But once we did that, once we froze some of the open positions and we cut some of the expenditures, um, we were able to be sustainable through this year. Um, and that's where we got the 45%. We took five months from May through September's activity. No, I'm sorry. May through September's receipts, which is March, through July's activity, which is some of our big months, and we zeroed them out, and then we did an analysis, a percentage, and to see where the percent fell, and it was like 44.7%, which we rounded up to 45%, okay? That's where we came from. So all of the projections, um, the departments went through, trued up their projections. We also went through the revenue side, trued them up. And, and what I mean by trued them up is that we looked at actual, where we sit actually at the end of July, and then trued them up to the 45%. So you're going to see some of them do a little better than the 45%, but that's because we took actual numbers and then estimated the rest of the 5%, the, the five months, excuse me. So... Um, Personnel for 2020, the 3% merit and the 2% market were still in effect. The market adjustment goes into effect on January 1 of the year. Um, so those were already done. Those were already into effect. So we left those alone. And the additional personnel changes that I spoke to a little bit earlier was as a result of the hiring freeze. And that was across all departments. Um, it wasn't just one or two or three funds. It was across all departments. And that was just the open positions that we could manage being frozen. So at the end of, <clears throat> excuse me, at the end of this year, um, we are now projecting to be at the 30% fund balance. That's good. That's good. Uh, but all of those things that we just talked about have to remain in place and the Christmas season we need to do well. Um, however, I will say 30% is good, but what I want, I want you all to see is that we need to, um, for some of the major funds, m many of you know that I have to balance out five years. I don't have to, I just do it to see if we can be sustainable. Because one year's ending balance has an effect on the next year, and so on and so forth. So one of the pictures that we're seeing is, yes, Right here, we're going to be able to make it through this year. Yay, that's great. Um, and, and even next year. And next year comes with some harder assumptions and the following year. But in order for us to maintain a constant pattern and to be able to manage through these times, we need to keep with some assumptions. We need to use priority-based budgeting to the fullest. I mean, from start to finish, make those tough decisions that are not easy to make. They're not. But... What is the best thing for our entire city? We need to look at it in that realm. And once we do that, we can get out of this and we can move forward 
and some of those changes and some of those implementations that are for the better for the city are just going to make us that much better. So um, that's kind of the assumptions that we're going to talk about today. But the ending projected reserve is at 30 percent. Um, yes. So if you move forward, um, and so we don't want to go to that, but that is the equivalent of roughly a little over 2.5 million. Am I reading that right? Um, 30 percent. It sound, that sounds about right, Rod. Okay. Let me look well, real quick. You, you might cover it because we get to it later on in a graph. But I, I just want to make sure I don't speak, and I've got it right here. So. Two million five hundred sixty-three thousand. Okay. So right on. Okay. Yes, sir. So that was the projection for this year for the general fund. Now here's the 2021 budget, um, and this we're going to go through the assumptions that were built into that. I, it's a little bit hard to see um, the numbers down there. They probably should be black at the bottom. Just FYI, Melissa. Um, anyway, um, market adjustment for 2021. The decision was made that we'll just take that out. Uh, we left in the merit. And I'll just preface this by saying we don't make these decisions. These decisions come from the leaders, the city leaders, Stan. Me. Yes. Um, but they, they do it through discussion and analysis and understanding of what's best for the city. So the market adjustment went, but the max, the merit increase is still there. And that's a good thing. So we, we look at maybe this is not great, but this is good. So one outweighs the other. Uh, the sales tax increase, it was a negative 22%. That's what we're assuming for 2021. That's calculated based on the 2019 actual receipts. So 2021, we're showing sales tax is going to decline by 22% in comparison to 2019's full year. We did it that way so that you could see 2019 full active year versus what we're assuming for 2021 and so on and so forth. Uh, does anybody have any questions about that at all right now? Okay, so we'll keep moving. So um, we have no new employees um, budgeted, and that's not just the general fund. We just had no new positions for next year or the following year. Um, Debt service out of the general fund is 238580 uh, That's the energy performance. We have, many of you know that we just refinanced or uh, modified that, um, and we have three years instead of six years left, and we cut $80,000. So three years left, and we'll be done with that, but that's the energy performance. Um, 400000 for the convention center subsidy. Um, that's what we have in there so far. And that does not include the 140000 for the incentive review. That's um, in addition to, just so you all know. Uh, we also have in there um, 750000 for the parks and rec subsidy. And I will tell you, I should have spoken about this already, the two subsidies, um, parks and rec and um, public safety, those, as a result of COVID, and we've already talked about that, had to be reduced by the 25%. We had to uh, sustain that 25% cut as a result of the revenue projections that were going to be decreased for 21 as well. So just so you know, um, this budget includes a subsidy for the Parks and Rec by $750,000. It includes the public safety subsidy by $5,735,833. Also, the transfer um, for the code enforcement's in there, and the Ballparks of America subsidy is at $290,000. And then we have no capital expenditures in there, no internal service fund transfers, and there's about 34,000 of one-time uh, expenditures in there. Um, and for the capital and the internal service fund, I'm just going to pause for a minute because um, when you see the when you see the funds at the end, we'll go through that. Um, you'll notice that um, we have that fund balance of what we just talked about, the two and a half million fund balance. But if you spend your capital and you spend your one time, it reduces that fund balance, which then causes 
the next year's beginning balance to start off low or so on and so forth and creates. So for the next couple of years, we're really going to have to be cautious about the capital and the uh, internal service fund transfers and those kind of things. Now, I will tell you, I'm thankful that we've already been able to do some of the internal service fund transfers in the past years because we have that now. And so for some of the emergency things, like Cindy was having, I think with an air conditioner and stuff, she's able to use that without affecting her operating budget. It's an extremely good example of why we put those internal service funds back into place. And um, Mike has the same thing. So at least we have those in the time of need. So that's a good thing. But we're going to have to pause on transferring a whole lot of money for the general fund over there until we are able to be get back up. Okay. Um, what this does include is it includes the Taney County Partnership of 10000 It includes the Taney County Airport of 10000 um, Health Department subsidy for $180,000. Housing Authority was the $90,000. And the service agencies, we have in there $100,000. That's up for discussion. Um, but we just wanted to manage it the most we've done. That's what we've got in there for this year. We also have, um, which is not listed on here because it's contractual, the Branson Area Festival of Lights is also in there for 25,000. Some of the other you know, things are in there, but these are the ones that we wanted to point out. Most people ask us, do we have this allotted for? So these are ones that we wanted to stand out. Uh, is there any questions to this point? Yes, sir. So the outlay that could come about from the regional airport is is not out of general fund then? Are or you, is that that? Are you talking about the hall, um, the... Um, well, the larger airport. Yeah, the big one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, no, sir. That comes out of the tourism fund, yeah. okay. um, and we cannot budget for that one. That one's obviously subject to appropriation, so every time how that works is when they pre present us an invoice, they do it twice a year. When they present an invoice to us, we bring it before the board in the form of a budget amendment, and for now it comes out of the um, tourism fund. Yes, sir. The uh, Taney County Partnership, uh, which we pay $10,000 per year, uh, that previously to have an economic development division in the city, uh, we probably that probably cost us 100000 a year, give or take, maybe more. Uh, so this 10000 has always been a bargain for us to have them doing that work instead of the city doing it independently. And I feel they're suffering the same crunch, and, and I'm the representative for the city to that board. Uh, and probably next year, they were going to ask for an increase, uh, both for, particularly from the county, but also from the cities, uh, to uh, get on a sounder footing themselves. And they're doing a lot of work besides what they originally did. So I think it'll be well worth it in a bargain to the city. And I realize we'll just have to deal with that when the time comes, but I'm telling you that will be coming probably next year sometime. Okay. Yeah. And that's, I mean, it's good to know since we've already compiled the 22 as well. I think that's good to know and we'll look at that. Um, certainly. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, and, and I think what Bob just said and what you just said gives us a perfect opportunity, uh, opportunity to talk a little more about priority based budgeting yeah. because I agree completely yeah. with Bob that it would it would be appropriate to help that organization because it does bring business to our community, which then increases our ta sales tax dollars. But we do have to find where to bring that money from, and and that we have to make those tough decisions, and and that's what we rely on everybody to do. And so when we look at that list there, just be thinking about where we could possibly reduce some money to give more money to that location. And that brings up an excellent point um, because uh, you'll read in the director's note in the report, the priority-based budgeting, and I know I tell you all about this and I use it all the time, but this tool is extremely important. The departments go through a lot of work every year to help us maintain that tool, to look at that tool. That's where these hard decisions come in. We have got to, at this point in time, look at all of our programs. And it's no longer just an option, it's really a necessity. Because we've got to be able to look at the programs and look at how these programs rate against our goals. And we've got to be able to say, okay, this program is costing us this much money. Is this really necessary for the city? And then you go into 
Is this something a private company can do? Is this something another public entity can do? Is this something that they're already doing and why are we duplicating that or are we competing against other private businesses for business? This is the perfect opportunity to ask ourselves these questions and we've got to make strong, sound decisions and it, and it has to be citywide. The focus has to be what's best for the city. Um, and I'm speaking about that as far as financials go, because we have options. We have things right now available to us that we can um, reallocate and reallocate those funds to where the city desires the most um, efforts be placed in. But we only have so much staff. We only have so much money. We only have so much ability, and, and some of our staff work very long hours, and they do it, and they don't complain about it, and not that I'm aware of, and they do it because of the love and the dedication they have to the city. So I just think, um, from my perspective, it's our duty um, on behalf of our staff and our citizens to really look at these programs and dive into it. And maybe for us and for this committee, it takes another meeting to really dive into it, to really look, they're already scored, they're already rated, to really look at these programs and really talk about, is it a necessity? Do, what do we do and what can we do for the sake of the city? We don't wanna reduce our services, but how can we still provide these strong, sound services that all these people in this room provide to the city and still be sound financially. It's, it's, it's a discussion that we really, really need to have. And we need to go program by program and some of the low hanging fruit, and I call it low hanging fruit simply because it's low ranking on the quartile and it's a lot of dollars. It's low hanging fruit that we can grab, that we can give to a private sector, to another public entity, use those extra funds, reallocate those daughters, dollars, <laughs> daughters. I have two of them. That's why. <laughs> Reallocate those daughters to, uh, I did it again. Sorry. <laughs> those dollars to where it is most important. Um, and so um, this is just a conversation that I'm also, I think pleading might be the wrong word, but I'm going to be talking about it a lot for this year because it, 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 it presents itself to me that maybe I haven't been speaking enough about it for those decisions. And I'm gonna tell you all that, um, and I don't wanna speak out of turn here by any means, but I really would like to say that the programs that we have that are low hanging fruit, um, they won't go away. They'll just be transferred to another entity or another business. What will happen then is you will see um, the repurposing. And it, what it does is it gives the directors the ability to repurpose those funds for something that's more and more important and, and a need that we get told all the time, we've gotta do. You gotta have better roads, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. Yes, we need to do that. And how are we going to do that? Because we can't create more money or we shouldn't create more money. And we can't do all of these things. So what are we going to do for the sustainability of the city? I've talked enough. I'm moving on. I just wanted to preach that a little bit. Yes, sir. So that kind of begs the question, zero capital expenditures. How impactful is that for 21? And then moving forward based on your priority budgeting, is that all zeros moving forward? Or? Yeah, so it's a good question for you. And we put in the back of this magazine, we put that this year, it's new, um, um, what we did, and it was Melissa's idea, and I think it was a great one, the capital requests, we put all of the 2021 capital requests, and we listed them. We listed the quartile, the program, the score, the department, the program name, and the cost for each program. So you can look back, and we're gonna print these. I didn't wanna print a whole bunch of them today for uh, in case we had changes and those kind of things. I wanted them to be set so we didn't overspend. So you can look at all of these things and see all of the capital items that were requested from the departments, where they rank, and the dollar value that they have on them. Um, and if you uh, have any questions before that meeting or whatever, please feel free to call me. Um, I'll help in any way I can. Yes, sir. On the uh, service agencies, I noticed we've got $100,000 set down there, and I believe prior to, sorry, prior to this year, we had $60,000 there, and I think we only actually individually budgeted about 80000 for this year, but the board 
assigned 100,000 to yes, it. Sir. Is that a place that we could look at that, see how much we use this year, and see if we need to lower that so that money could be put to a, a different Absolutely. Use? And it, um, yes, sir. We put it out there because it was the largest, and Stan had already expressed for us to reduce it. And, and that is exactly the kind of thing we need to do. We need to do that more by the programs, but we can reduce that, but that's up to you all. Um, if that's something that y'all want me to look at and do, um, we'll reduce it. But I just didn't make any of the changes um, that we wanted to make until you all had seen it. So that that's up to y'all. And and Julia, I think you're you're newer here. So for the social service agencies, what we do is we um, they tell us an allotment of money. Um, and then we go out for RFP, and then the social service agencies can come and bid on that and tell us um, how they're going to use that. And it's all based on reimbursement. So they would submit their receipts, um, and then um, Cam has gotten it before. Um, I've got a lot in my head that I can't think of right now. I'm sorry. But um, the Crisis Center, um, yeah, that one's a good one. Um, Salvation Army, that's the one I was thinking of, thank you. Um, the Salvation Army, many of those, uh, many of them have been used throughout the years. Um, the Arts Council, I know, um, this year the library, I believe. So there's many of them that have taken advantage of those dollars um, and they submit all their receipts to us. We go through and make sure that it's what uh, the contractual purpose was supposed to be for and then we submit the money back to them. So that's just a little bit of history on that. So Jamie, I think What do we need to do? Where can we cut back? What can we eliminate? So this is this is just this is spot on that aligns with this is just good business practice, good business sense to make sure that we're doing this um, that we're not continuing to do something just because we've always done it. Right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So, and even more important now through COVID through 2020, it just brings it more to the spotlight of can't continue to do things the way you've always done them because you've always done them that way. You've got to look for new ways, more effective ways, more efficient ways to do things and use your dollars. So. Absolutely, yes. Just as a reminder, could we please be sure oh, to speak to the microphone? Sorry, Otherwise, Jeff. the people on the stream can't hear us. I, Sorry. I, that's okay. Thank you, Pam. <laughs> you won't restate all that. <laughs> I'm just commending Jamie on looking and making the tough decisions on, you know, the whole team, it's not just Jamie, it but you got, somebody's got to start the conversation. It's a good business practice to um, look and, and not just do something because we've always done it, but look to see, does it still make sense? Can we, we reallocate those dollars somewhere else that's more needed? Um, and do we still need to continue to do something? So those are tough decisions because people get really attached to the yes. things that we've always done. Um, yes. But because of the current situation that we're in, I think everyone is is being forced to, to have to do this for their company, for their own personal budgets, their own personal um, household. Um, everybody's having to relook at everything. So good job. And that is that's really true. Over the COVID times, the times of shutdown and stuff, we had. Uh, cities call and the ones that really wanted to implement the priority based budgeting as a result of this um, for help and we're very thankful we're very glad to help but we sat on some webinars and we did some webinars for this and some of the questions and some of the concerns and some of the larger cities um, and what they were faced with um, was extremely more challenging um, than some of the things that we have been faced with. However, the same concept still applies. And they were like, wow, how did you do this? How did you get this done? And how did you get this done? And so we were able to assist them and help them. Um, and there's a lot of cities now that are really picking up on the concept of priority-based budgeting and really utilizing it, which is, is super helpful. Maybe we can get the federal government to do that too. So. Anyway, um, I'm sorry, was there any more questions against the general fund, the assumptions? We just laid out the 2021 assumptions um, this year for you. We've done the 2022, um, but we will also talk about those next year. And, and as, as 2021 goes along, um, next year's might be changed a little bit, but we, we've done both of those. I just wanted to really hit home about the 2021 this year. 
Is there any questions for the general fund? So the ending um, reserve, I believe, is around 30% for 21 as well. And um, we do not have to keep it at 20, um, at 30%. I put it back up to 30% just because of this year and how much we had to use it this year. Um, but what we do have to keep it at is at 20%. So you have a 10% swing there. Um, now just remember that what you choose to do with that 10% will affect next year and the year after and the year after. So I should have stated that earlier too. Okay. Um, so this, these are the assumptions of the other funds as well. So water sewer fund, again, no market adjustment, uh, the max merit increase of 3%. Um, now, water rate is at 2%, and sewer rate I had at 7%, um, and those are the models that Mike was going to be talking to you all about. Now, the caveat is he came to me yesterday, he's like, oh, Jamie, it was 4%, not 7%. And so I, will, I went back in the numbers and I looked at, um, we really need the 7% on sewer this year. as And I talked to him about this before I talk into y'all, but the 7%, we really need the 7%. It's not a whole lot more money to our citizens. He's going to talk all about that. So I would like to be able to keep the 7% in my projections because we were able to balance water and sewer out um, a couple of years with this assumption in mind. And once we balanced it, if you remember, as a result of COVID, the water sewer fund is, was the one cash-wise that was hurting below the 20%. I believe the projections were 16%. I'm telling you what, Mike and his staff, they went to work and they they did. They looked at their operating and at first they were way out of balance and they went to work and they really uh, looked at it and they really made some cuts and, I mean, came back to me and boom, we were able to balance it because of the work that they did, not because of the work that we did. And so it was a combined effort. And... Um, but I did, for the revenues, we do the revenues in our department because we have the billing and all of that in our department, and we kept it at 7%. So I'm going to tell you that we really need the 7%. Um, the model shows 4%, but the need financially to keep it at a zero balance. Otherwise, if we don't do the 7%, I did a calculation, we'll be out of balance by about 120000 for this year, and it's just an effect. Um, you can draw the fund balance down for that, but if you do that, then you don't remain at a stable level, those kind of things. Now, I will say that there's a $1.3 million contingent upon grant approval and the Taney County approval. That's the sewer sales tax. He's got all those capital dollars in there. They also um, have a couple of other funds that we've moved capital dollars to over the years that have some dollars in there as well. So we talked to him about that as well, and I, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about their rate increases because that's for him to talk about in the next meeting. I just wanted to inform you that there's a difference, 7% uh, and 4%. Um, the transportation. What's your recommended reserve level for the water and sewer fund? Uh, we, we keep it above 20, but I'm, I'm recommending this year, I'm recommending 30% all the way across the board. Right now, um, with their projections and the reductions that they've made and the 7%, we, the cash availability was able to get back up to the 30%, which is tremendous based on where we were projecting the COVID to end this year. Um, it took a lot of work and a lot of thought process, so I'm just uh, relaying that on to you all so you can see what all the departments have done. But anyway, I will say that um, the cash availability specifically for that fund, I would really recommend keeping it at a 30% level because one purchase, as you know, is so ex one thing, one capital item that we have to do is so much money sometimes that it could wipe that whole extra 10% out in one setting if you think about it. So. Next is the transportation fund. The transportation fund is the market adjustment, again, is zero. I, uh, we just zeroed it out for every all funds. Um, max merits, 3%. Sales tax decrease is 20%. That's a 20% from 2019's uh, activity, okay? Um, and um, we just took out comparing it to 2020 because of this year and how 
uh, an anomaly that it is. Um, no capital, again, is anticipated for them either. Now, their fund balance is good, but in order to have to uh, balance, it's the same message to balance their revenues against their expenditures. Revenues are low, so that means we have less money to use for expenditures. The fund balance may be healthy, but once you start taking that down, again, it's the same message over and over and over. That's a message that's up to you all. I'm just presenting you what we our findings. Public safety fund, um, same thing, no market adjustment. Max merit increase is 3%. Sales tax decrease uh, down 19% from 2019. The difference is a uh, like a decimal, a rounding for the transportation and the um, um, public safety fund. And the $751,000 capital, um, that includes their Motorola contract, and that's something that we have to do because we did a three-year contract on that one. We also have, I believe, in there um, the $250,000 for um, their vehicles. And the reason being, and I want to just, they were willing to give those up, but we, we're talking through enterprise. And many of you know the enterprise agreement that we have and the lease on the vehicles that we have. And um, what would come up is we have some cars for this next year getting ready to roll over. So this will be the first time we've done that um, for the police cars are getting ready to roll over. So those would be replaced and then we would still get some new ones. And so if we had to just give it up for this one year um, down the road, it would create a bottleneck and a higher expense if we did that. So since we have it, um, I am making the recommendation that they still get the vehicle for their, the money for their vehicles to keep it moving. And again, it's simply my recommendation. Um, the tourism fund, now this is the one that has seen the largest decline and um, it's, it's not a huge surprise. Um, again, we're, we're looking at a 44% decrease and again, that one really should be 45 because it's 44.5%, so we should round that up. So we're looking at a 45% decline. Uh, tourism marketing fund, uh, about 1.5 million. That's what we have estimated in there based off of the tourism tax. Um, and that's quite a bit less than we have been um, giving them in the past. So. Um, that might need to be a discussion that's going to hurt hurt everyone, unfortunately. Um, the debt service is $3.4 million. Um, again, I'll just say that the tax decline was based upon 2019. But the tourism marketing dollars are based upon the revenue, and it's 25% of the revenue. And it's 25% of the uh, revenue that comes in after our TIF administration fees come out. So once those are netted against that, then you have a base uh, revenue for the tourism, and 25% of that goes to marketing. Now, the convention center, 500,000 comes off of that. Our contingency, 125, comes off of that. And then after that is where we get the calculation for the chamber. A lot of years, many of you are aware that we get, we are able to do a rollover mount once the audit is done. Once the audit is completed, then we recalculate how much is left in that fund and the marketing fund, and we have to maintain a $125,000 reserve there. And once that's done, we, we recommend giving the excess back to the chamber, and that's a contractual thing. Um, and unfortunately, since the audit is not complete, it's almost completed. Since it's not completed and presented yet, I haven't been able to calculate those rollover dollars yet, but it's not gonna be near as much as has been in the past, if so, any. Yes, sir. The uh, renewal of the tourism tax uh, will come up fairly quickly. And it seems to me that there might be some projects and some things that we would want to look at, I think, when we when we do that, we're going to have to give the public something that we're going to do with that money like, like we did originally. And uh, there are things, the one that comes to my mind immediately is uh, Roark Valley Road. There's a little stretch of Roark Valley Road that never got improved. And it floods every time it rains an inch or maybe less. Uh, and we have to close the road. Uh, and 
that type of thing would be something that we could tell the public that we need to do. We need to do it because of traffic to Tanger Mall. We need to do it because of the new police station that will be going up there. There are a lot of reasons, and I think almost anyone can see why that's a project we need. But that, that whole tax passing is, is a major part of our budget here for capital improvements. Absolutely. So, uh, I think we just got to keep that in mind. Huge. You can't put it in this year's or next year's, but, but it's something that we need to be thinking about. In that excellent comment, because in the past we've had a um, model, so it's like a long-term capital model, um, but we need to dust that off and get that going again. Um, we quit using that, and we've each one of us have done our own models simply because there were some things thrown in there and some things that we were, like, um, do y'all remember the Jumbotron? Okay, that one was one of them. Some of those things just were things that is not a necessity. It really shouldn't be on a capital item list, those kind of things, but it's up to y'all. So what we'll do is we'll start brushing that off. That's really good when we do the bonding capacity yeah. uh, and the vote for that, which is coming up very quickly. So yes, sir. And Stan's already told us to get that little group back together uh, for the passing of that tax. I forget the name of the group, sorry. Thank you. Okay. Is there any more questions um, against the tourism fund? Now, the, the fund balance is coming up. It's, it's coming back from where it was. Um, I'm going to tell you what the anticipated fund balance is. It will be $14 million. So we're bringing it back up now. Caveat, some of that is restricted for debt service, and you all know that it's about seven to eight million dollars is restricted for debt service. We're still coming up from where we used to be. Um, so um, there you go for that. And the last debt service payment against the tourism is January of 2022. So that's good to know as well. So, Jamie, the um, tourism fund, obviously, as we've worked through this, and then Bob just alluded to the infrastructure and the need in the future. But um, by statute, we're not bound to um, take any of those dollars and budget that for infrastructure. We can set it at zero. 25% and 75%. Um, but, but we are paying infrastructure. It's just in the form of debt service. Got it. Okay. That, Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Perfectly. Any other questions there? Okay. And then this is just some economic outlooks. Um, and we list all of the ones that we do comparison for, Kiplinger, um, the GDP, um, Federal Reserve. We list all of those and we source them um, so that you can have some idea of where we are ranked in comparison. That's why we do that. And then this, these are really more definitions about the physical health tool. Um, uh, I plan on having that fi the live physical health tool at the next, the big meeting, the September 24th, because I really think it's really important for you all to see not just the here and now. And, and I think that if, if, I had, um, if I had a title to everything, um, it would be that, that we use the physical health tool and the priority-based budgeting for the importance of the future. And so I think here and now, yeah, we can get through this year and next year. Uh, if we keep everything um, the way we have it in the budget, that almost never happens because we have budget amendments and those kind of things. So as you're thinking about those budget amendments, we typically bring before you all, and then it goes to the board. Um, every budget amendment takes away from the balanced budget it, and it dips into using the reserve and those kind of things. And we state that on there. I just kind of wanted to remind you that those two years are vitally important that we stick to it as much as at all possible. Now, the the uh, areas of concern for me are long term. And I, I know I say this a lot, that the 23 through 25, that is that is the concern for me. And it's a concern for me because I know what when I balance typically out the five years, which meant 21 through 25. 
And so what we were seeing was it became more difficult and more difficult and more difficult to be able to balance the 23 through 25. And here's why. Because, and this is not just the city, this is all across the country, because what's happening is our expenditures are growing at a much faster pace than our revenues are. Um, your revenues can grow at 1%, but your expenditures are growing about 25 to 3%, and that's GDP. So if you think about that, of course it's going to be an upside-down situation, right? And so then it becomes to, what do we do? And so the 23 through 25, on all of the funds that we balanced, um, the assumptions that we balanced with are zero. So zero wage increases. And again, this is 23 through 25, and these were our assumptions. Zero increases, zero merit, zero health insurance increases, zero expenditure increases, zero. And so that was what we had to do to get the 23 through 25 balance. Now, what that says to me, and I think to all of you is, well, that's not realistic. It isn't. It is not realistic. So then what do we do? Then we have to look at other ways to figure this out, and that goes back to the pro priority-based budgeting and the programs and making those tough decisions. You remove the program, you remove it for this year, but you remove it and the growth that it's going to cost us year over year over year, so it's an impact and it's an increase year over year over year that you're also removing and assisting the city with being able to do those priorities that are a lot more important and that the community has told us is more important. So those are just things that I want you to be able to understand that as we go through and we talk about the 2021 budget, yes, it's important. And the 2022 budget, yes, it's important. Um, but I think that the short-term decisions that we make, we also need to consider the long-term effects that those short-term decisions have, if that makes sense. I see it financially, but I mean, I know it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, a common approach, but I'm just... I want to make it very clear that it's a necessity going forward. And it's not just for one fund, it's for every fund. Now, there's uh, some funds um, that really need it more than others. But um, essentially, um, we depend on the sales tax. We depend on the taxes coming in. When the economy is hurt, the taxes decrease. And what do we do? Well, we use the tools that we have to make the important decisions, and that's where we're at. Okay, so... The general fund, um, I know it's a little bit blurry. I apologize for that. And, and we're going to give everybody, we have the magazines, and once we're completely um, spot on with those, then we'll move forward and give you all one of those. And then I'm going to bring the physical health tool, which is some of these graphs, and we'll bring it live to the uh, September 24th meeting. I know I've shown it to you before, but the ability to use that tool is tremendous. You can put in different scenarios in that tool and watch the long-term effects of those decisions. And, um, you know, maybe every decision, you put it into that tool and see what it's going to do, long-term effect, the long-term impact. You can see it, and it changes. And it's a really good tool. But this is a picture of the expenditures and the revenues. Now, again, what I said was I balanced the 21 through 25, so you should see it come together because it's balanced, the revenues and expenditures are zero but it's balanced to zero based off the assumptions that I just shared with you, which they're not realistic, but what I'm saying is we got time and we have time to make sure that we nail those decisions down and so that we can properly affect the future. Um, and so this is just a picture of the general fund and the reserve calculation at the bottom and where we're at revenues versus expenditures. Does anybody have any questions on that? We tried to do one for every fund. Um, and I will be very happy to talk about it um, for every fund. We just wanted to make sure and really just nail down the graphs for you this year so that you could have a visual of what we're up against. So, Jamie, on as you look in the narrative of that and you move forward, it might be helpful um, for people who are reading that to understand that the general fund is driven by the 1% sales tax plus okay. fee income. Yes, sir. If you're looking for it in the narrative, you wouldn't necessarily know 
Okay. What drives. So somewhere in those two pages, if it, it might be helpful to work that in. Yes, sir. That's really good. Thank you. I will do that. And it's really helpful that when y'all read it, because when I, when we're going through it, and it's not just me, it's Melissa, it's Stacy, all of us, when we're going through it and we're writing these things and doing these things, we just do it because we know it. You know. So when y'all are reading it, I will take all of that I can get to be able to help it be better understood by the community, certainly. Because if you look at the public safety fund coming up and the transportation fund, you'll see where you work those half okay. in there. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Um, here's another graph. Is there any other questions on that first page? Okay. Here's another graph of um, really priority-based budgeting and how it's used in the general fund spending by category. We also uh, wanted to show you all this because I think it's really important that you see the breakdown like personnel, the 58.8% uh, of the entire budget, and contractual and commodities and those type of things. Now, if y'all don't like the graphs or anything, please feel free to tell me. Some of these are new, um, and we've put them in there for visual uh, purpose so that you all could see it. But if you don't like them or if they're confusing, let us know, okay? Um, Anyway, I really think when you look at the uh, funds, it's important to see how much personnel costs the funds. And then you can see they don't have a whole lot left after personnel. So personnel is extremely important, obviously. Um, we did it for public safety again. Um, and if you'll look at this graph, this is a harder conversation, but if you look at this graph, you'll see we did this one out. Hang on, 30. I can see it better up there. 2030. 2030, I believe, yes, okay. So, uh, again, we've only got it balanced, and this graph shows you at 25, okay? So then what, you need, what you're looking at is a pattern that we're going to have to fix, okay? You're looking at the expenditures way outpacing the revenues, and that's a pattern that needs to be resolved now so that in the future you don't have that problem and it doesn't come on you right away. At least you have that information now and you know what to do and how to do it. And that's still based on that 25% reduction <coughs> of what general fund would have looked like coming. Um, the 25% the reduction was for 21 and 22. We did put it back in for 23 through 25. Okay. The full subsidy. Okay, full subsidy. Yes. So that's with the full subsidy from 23 out. So we're still, okay. So we still got some uh, discussions that really need to be had. You're, you're not showing any increases in the revenue uh, from 23 all the way through 30 there, which is where we drop into a deficit. Uh, wouldn't there be some, j just uh, assuming that we do increase, and I think that is an assumption in there, that by 23 or so we start to increase in sales? Yes, we only did, so I've only got it balanced out to 25, so that's probably why it's doing that. But okay. yes, 25, I assumed a 1%, all the way to 25, we assumed a 1%. So it's growing at a 1%, uh, but those other years, you're right, that's flat. So we will grow that. You're still going to have a picture that needs to be resolved, but that's good. I'll do that and correct it in there, certainly. And we drove this one out longer. The rest of them you'll see, like our 25 through balance. We drove this one out longer because it's one I'm concerned about. <clears throat> um, this is another picture, and we've done, again, this for every fund, and it's, we do, there are new graphs in there. Um, again, if they're relevant and you like to look at them, great. If it's good information, if it's not really good information, just let us know and we'll replace it with something different. These come from the physical health tools and the priority-based budgeting, and these are how we derive from these, but you can see personnel. Uh, contractual commodities and capital and how they rank in the graphs and then the years and the spending by departments and so on and so forth. We also put a narrative in there to try to make it a little bit easier to understand. Um, police is about 91% personnel and fire is about 88.9% um, personnel. So that really presents a huge picture there as well. 
Those, I, you've asked for criticisms on those. I, I, I'd like to give you compliments on those. I think that those are very informative. Uh, it's very good to know how much of that is labor because when we ask for more out of our police department, we have to realize that means more labor, that we have to have more people. So That's I, absolutely. I think those are very good and they're very self-explanatory. I think any citizen reading that could understand that. Glad to hear that. Thank you. Again, here's a picture of the Parks Fund. Uh, what we do for one fund, we try to do it for all funds so that you can have a picture of the whole entire ball. And so the Parks Fund, um, again, we took it out to the 24, and you'll see that they come together closely. Um, and then you'll see that there's a right at 65% personnel is their budget. And then that shows you at the bottom um, they're only required to have a 10% reserve, and that's the dotted line. And then you, we also showed you where the 20% would be if we had the 20%, and then um, where it all falls and where we fall in between. Okay, and you can see sometimes theirs is a, a bit challenging, but I'm going to tell you they do a great job. I say this all the time just because uh, Cindy could probably do my job, no problem with all the fight. She don't want it. She told me that before, but she could probably uh, do it hands down because she's just that financially minded like that. I appreciate that. And she, but you can see the ups and the downs of where their fund balance is. And 10% um, sometimes is a little bit challenging to get at. Some of the departments, like I told you, uh, water sewer parks is another one that we went back and said, hey, we're kind of out of balance. What can you do? And they made another pass at it. It wasn't us. It was them going back and looking in their operations to where they could help with that out of balance um, and then keep their levels at 10%. So we are very thankful for that as well. And then um, this is a look at the transportation fund. I should have stopped and asked if you all had any questions about the parks fund. I did have one, if you yes, don't sir. mind. The, the, labor, uh, in, or the, yeah, the labor portion of that actually in 20 is up a little from 19. I'm a little surprised at that because we didn't hire hardly any of the, uh, the seasonal personnel this year, did we? I, I would have expected that to be down a little. We hired some of the pool and stuff, but there were some that we left out. Um, and I will, I will double check that. Um, we went through that pretty heavy, but I will double check that to find a reason for that. We did do the 2% and the 3%, and we did um, have that insurance increase, and that's always a reason for it to go up from the year over year. But I'll double check that specifically for you, certainly. Thank you. Quick question on that. Jamie, is uh, part of that offset by the revenue we received from the gate charge? Does that go to help? pay for temporary that all of her fees and stuff go into the revenues yeah. and then it's offset certainly by all the expenditures so there might be a balancing with those part-time yeah. employees yeah okay you're right any more questions there okay there's a look at the transportation fund as well um, you can see that it's balanced and um, then the reserve down at the bottom their reserve, cash-wise, dollar value is a lot lower. So when you when we have it at 30% and you spend it, it, it drops it quite a bit from one year to another. So if you have capital and those items in there, which what we put in um, for 2022, an internal service transfer, um, because they have an internal service fund, it's really important to keep that going for 2022. But you could see how much just a little bit reduces the fund balance because their uh, balance is low, but they, they're doing a good job of helping us maintain that. Um, is, is there any questions on the transportation fund? And here's a picture at, um, they are 35% personnel. Um, and then there's the contractuals and the commodities, the capital um, for your picture. Unless there's any questions, I'll keep moving forward. And then this is, um, and we, this is an explanation about priority-based budgeting. And so we, I won't go through this too much because I've already hit that so hard today. But um, just for you all, if you if you ever want some good reading and you need some tools to do it, this magazine is what you need to read. <laughs> it might help you sleep too. But the uh, the priority-based budgeting really helps define. Um, what it is and what it's about and how we utilize it. 
<clears throat> and then this is just a narrative. Again, um, it's good reading. It's a narrative of what we put in about our success stories, about what we need to do, reallocation. I've already gone through that, so I won't keep going. But anyway, there you go. And this is important, and this is a piece of priority-based budgeting, but I'm going to go through these questions again because it's really important to ask these questions when making good decisions. Are we over-providing to have a mandated programs with low relevance? So um, what that basically means is, yeah, okay, so it's a mandate, but are we over-providing the service, or can we just do the basic service and save some money and reallocate it for something else? That's kind of where that goes. Are we over-providing to our self-imposed mandates? Our self-imposed mandates, our codes, those codes that we put into place for our city, same, same idea here. Uh, are, we, are we doing it? Are we over-providing that service? Can we do it at a baseline, still keep that service, but save some money there? Those are things that help us think. Uh, are there service sharing options with other political organizations? Um, we have um, the Taney County Health Department. I mean, that's a really good one because we're, we subsidize them. We give them money every year to help them, and then they come back and they do our inspections, and they are our health department. It's a good example there. Uh, Public-private partnerships, um, the convention center uh, management company, that's an example of a public-private partnership. We have a public convention center but we needed a private company to come in and help us run it like they know how to do. And so that's an example. Um, um, there's all, all kinds of other public-private partnerships out there. Um, are there programs best provided by private sector? What that means, are we doing something currently that a private sector can do and possibly do it better? Um, if we want to keep lower performing programs, is there opportunity to recover costs? So what that means is if we're dead set on, we don't need this program, it, it's, it's sco scores low, but we, we want to keep it anyway, that's fine. What are you going to do to pay for it? Can we recover the cost by implementing fees and those kind of things to cover, to zero that out? What that does is that takes away the burden of that program on the city because you've just found a way for the outside people to pay for it because we want it. Does that make sense? So those, these are all questions we put in the magazine. We put it in there so that it will help you go back to when you want to make those decisions if you need it. Again, this is the methodology for um, how we determine the priority-based budget, and I won't keep them going on on that. These are all of our community goals. Um, I know many of you were here and we went through that and we scored the capital items against these goals. So many of you already know these very well. Um, but we have 10 big rocks here. These are the, uh, when we did the community plan, these are the major goals that were told to us. And these are how this city defines them. So community character, whoops, sorry about that. I went too fast. Um, this is the community character, and this is um, the priorities, and this is how we utilize those. Um, give me one second. Oops, sorry. Um, the chart um, in the PBB section refers to the program having the most or more effect on achieving our goals. That's the top one. And then it also goes down to how it's utilized by department, the community character contributions, what programs score the highest and those kind of things, what departments really make up, how much money we're spending and how we utilize um, that goal and how we tell our city, yes, we're accomplishing these goals and this is how we're doing it by this program, this program, this program, and this program. And we tried to do that with every goal so that we, in the past, what we've done is we've put the dollar value that we've spent on the other page and kind of put some little bubbles on how we've spent that. But this year we showed it by graph so that you could see it. So the same concept, it's just in a graph form because maybe it's a little bit easier to understand. This one was um, safety, health, and socioeconomic, and you can see the priorities, most and more, and those are just really the quartile rankings. One, two, three, four, the top one is most, 
so on and so forth. Um, and this is how much money we're spending and all these departments that make up all their programs. And some programs overlap. Some programs meet high on many goals, which is a great thing. So you'll see that here as well, what departments utilize it and what departments mostly achieve this goal for the entire city. Arts, culture, and education. This is the third one, and this is another example. Um, and then I'll keep moving. I don't want to lose you all, but I'll, I'll just keep moving. That's the intent of these graphs. And if you have any questions when you're looking through this, just please let me know. Economic development, um, that's another one that's huge, uh, important, especially in a tourism town. Um, and that's a picture of our convention center, which is great for economic development. We've discussed that just this week, I believe. And then here is the um, how we achieve that goal. Uh, really pointing, pointing out that, that, as we just discussed, additional money for the convention center to keep it open through the rest of the year. Uh, going back to that goal really, really helps you understand why that is so critical to the community. Absolutely. Yes, sir. And putting more money to the goals that achieve more. Absolutely. Um, so the next goal is infrastructure and an environment. And obviously infrastructure and the environment is extremely important to our city as well as any city. I think I've seen this goal on all the cities when we look at other goals for other cities. Infrastructure is always one of them. Safety is another one. There's a lot of our goals that overlap with a lot of cities because that's just what's important. And here is the infrastructure and the departments that utilize that the most you would expect. And I think it's a good picture. The next one is tourism. And our, our town is a very large tourism city. So it's extremely important um, there. And we have Fritz's Adventure. It came in a couple of years ago. That's one example of tourism or, or helping tourism. I know I'm not a tourist, but my kids sure appreciate that. And then here is how it looks as far as what departments, how much we spend, how much we contribute toward that goal. So really, if you think, if we had people come in and say, Jamie, here's the goals, but how are we achieving those goals? We can run programs based off of those goals to show them exactly all the programs that all of our departments do towards achieving the goals that they told us was important. It's not just a guess anymore, we know. Parks, open space, and recreation. And here is um, how we achieve those. And then land use. Oh, land use is important. Um, and then here's how we achieve, I'm sorry, I went too fast. Here's how we achieve that one as well. And then I'll move on, transportation. Um, I really don't want to bore you. I'm just trying to show you what we've done and why. But uh, here we go. Those are the goals surrounding transportation. And so we don't bore you. We put in some really cool transitions on the slides <laughs> to keep your attention. OK, so um, there is um, the picture of the transportation as well. And I, I will tell you, on the picture for the transportation, you see the cone in the road. When we first started presenting priority-based budgeting, many of you remember the story that we told about the city that was blocking off roads with cones, and they were doing it for years and years, cost them like $60,000. Finally, when priority-based budgeting folks went in there and said, well, what is this program? Nobody knew. Well, we just do it, and we've been doing it for 40 years. Um, it turns out that somebody that was in charge of the city years past, wanted them to close the road because that's the road they lived on and the traffic was too heavy and he wanted to be able to get home. <laughs> and they had just continued it, but it's a reason, it was a good example. <laughs> it was a really great example for why we should look at the programs because we need to make sure we know what we're doing and how much it costs and how it's achieving our goals. I'll keep moving. Um, good governance. Um, And then um, good governance, and this shows you the quartiles and how it's ranked and um, what departments utilize good governments the most, those kind of things. So really what those pictures are is it tells you how we're achieving the goals of our city, how much we're spending towards achieving the goals of our city, how much we're spending towards 
things that probably, you know, we could reallocate or repurpose. And um, that's really just a picture and an idea of what we can do moving forward, okay? And I know these are small, um, but what I will tell you is that this is a look at the general fund. And if you go through and you can zoom in probably on your iPad, this is a look at the general fund. This is the balance projections of where they're going to land for 21 and 22. I know we didn't go over a whole bunch of 22 today because I wanted to make sure we focused on 21, knowing that 22 may change. Maybe it won't, but it might change. And so we really wanted to focus on the assumptions. A lot of the assumptions for 22 stayed the same as 21. Um, with the exception of we stair-stepped, we believe that 22 will do better financially than 21, and so we stair-stepped it up to three-quarters of what we received in 2019. Um, and then 23 and out, we, we took it back to 2019 and then started projecting the 1% on forward, just so that you have that in mind. That's a look at the general fund. Uh, knowing down at the bottom, it shows you that 30% reserve, how much is available, what we have anticipated to spend down at the bottom. And if we spend the capital or the internal service fund, it tells you, you know, where it takes your reserve balance to. Um, and so for maybe the next couple of years, we might have to be limit that so that we can build it up and just move forward in the future. Again, this is, it's the same thing. It's a look at the fund. It's a transportation fund. And just for the board's knowledge, we typically send out the line item budgets to the board as well um, for them to look at prior to that um, meeting. So here is a look at the transportation fund. And then capital projects funds. We just showed it because we have that fund, but it's pretty much not doing anything for the next couple of years. And really that fund is just about money that we transfer out from one of our larger funds like transportation, tourism, general fund. We transfer the allotted capital dollars amount out there, transfer them into the capital projects fund. That's how we track the capital projects in that fund. That's a debt service. These are our debt services, and basically those money's coming in in those districts, those are TIF districts, money's coming in, um, money's going out for debt. This is a look at the Parks and Rec Department, and you can see, um, oh, we didn't put the reserve down there, I need to fix that too. But I believe we've been able to maintain the 10% reserve uh, at the bottom, um, but we will fix that. I didn't put it down there. Um, but with some, some reductions, so we just, we need to keep that in mind as well. Tourism fund, um, the tourism fund, I just told you about the balances and the balances are starting to come back up a little bit. Remember that when we start our big, large capital projects, that's where the money will come from is the tourism fund. And that is, I should have said, of the 4% sales tax, the 4% tourism tax. This is your public safety fund. This is a combination of police and fire. Um, and the capital that we discussed is at the bottom, and then that shows you they're right at 32% with their capital. And then they go down to 28%, I believe that says 28%, um, at 2022, and so on and so forth. So, the larger, the more capital dollars, those kind of things. But uh, we did put in um, some internal service money to start putting over for fire's new truck. They, they need a new fire truck. Um, and if we put a little bit of money every year along, we'll be able to pay for that instead of having to take debt out, um, if that makes sense. That's, we're moving money to internal service fund for those purposes to build up. And then there's a look at water sewer, and that combines their uh, major capital uh, funds in there as well. Do we have the operationals? And then, yeah, okay, so we, we separate the 620 fund is the water sewer operational fund, and that consists of their 
their normal um, department expenditures. And then the 145 is the large capital for water sewer fund. And the 146 is the small capital for water sewer fund. So there's two separate funds out there that have money in them for a dedicated projects. And that's and, uh, for the audit and how that happens is we have to merge all those back together. We do have it separated as well. Um, if y'all want to see the separate ones, we can bring those out too. But we just, at this point in time, showed the summary. And then here's a listing of all of the one t the internal um, one-time expenditures that you will see it's in the budget. This is a listing of what they all are, and this is uh, money that has been provided to account for these for this year. And you all will probably remember some of these as we have gone through when we did the capital. You will see some of these that we said, oh, these are more one-time in nature. So. Um, And then gets to the capital request. Um, this, again, we talked to y'all about it, but I thought it was really important for y'all to see all of the requests. Um, all the work that you did with all the quartiles, you all um, went through and helped. The department scored it first, and then this group scored it second, came back in, and these are their final quartiles and how they're ranked. And so you can see the cost on the programs as well as the ranking, the score, the departments, and all of that. Um, and we just put that one out there for 2021. We had the 2022, as you all know, but we really focused on 2021 this year, given the uh, what we've been through this year. So um, please feel free to go through all of those and ask me any questions. We have a couple of weeks before the major budget meeting, and any questions y'all have, I'm sure everybody else will have as well. So it's really helpful to for us to be able to just get all that information out there. Um, and then this is the 2020 merit matrix. Remember I said we had 3% budgeted for that, and this comes from the HR department, and this is just how it's all laid out. So essentially, if they get a five or above on their evaluation, they get 3%, so on and so forth. If they get a four or above, 2.5. And then this is just pictures of our city throughout our city looking forward. And then that takes you through the magazine. And that takes you through the budget assumptions as well. I think I... I um, I touched on everything that I wanted to speak about the budget today, but I wanted to get from y'all, what, what are your thoughts about the budget this year? I mean, what were you anticipating something different than what we've done? And, and we would just really like your feedback on some of these. You've already given us so much feedback. We appreciate it. But we like having y'all involved, even like when you scored the Capitol. I thought those meetings were just really great. It really helped you get down and really identify uh, the, the priority-based budgeting, and we use that a lot. So, Any um, questions from the Finance and Capital Committee? Any comments? Mr. Simmons. I'd just like to make a comment. I uh, Certainly being involved at all those steps along the line makes this much easier for us to understand at this point because we've seen it and, and we know where these pieces come from. And Julia hasn't had that, that experience uh, because she wasn't here at that time. But, but, it, but it really helps us to understand this book because we've seen a lot of this be developed before. Uh, but this whole process is, this, this is by far the best that we've ever done as far as I'm in here in my opinion. It's, it's the, the worst situation that you could possibly be in and yet You've done the best job of putting it together and putting it together simply. Uh, if you read through this and you're just interested in the city, you pretty well know how this city operates and where its money is going and why it's going there. Uh, that 2030 plan was invaluable to us. And, and of course, we had people helping us put it together. But uh, between you, uh, uh, Jamie, and, uh, and Joel back there, that that made it come alive uh, otherwise it was just going to sit there and it's a wonderful exercise we went through with the community but it wouldn't have done us any good in the future and by hammering on all of us throughout this last 10 years uh you have made us stick with this and make that a living document that uh, that actually does uh, uh benefit the city and keep us on track keep us from getting off of the subject uh, 
And then to be able to put this into priority-based budgeting, I think that community plan has really helped the priority-based budgeting because it gives you a, a framework to put mm -hmm. that uh, valuations on things uh, for the priority-based budgeting. So this is really a culmination of things that you've put together over the last 10 years and your department heads have all bought into this or this wouldn't work at all if they weren't really on board. And, uh, and so we come to a real critical situation like this and you've got such a good background uh, uh, that, that it makes it look almost like normal budgeting, uh, which it's not normal <laughs> budgeting at all. Uh, your financial forecast in there and the, the various places that you looked at for the financial forecast, very helpful. Uh, just, just it, no, we don't follow that. I mean, you know why Branson differs from some yes. of those forecasts. However, it's really helpful to have them as a framework to put them in there. Uh, so I think uh, there's still some tweaking to do on this, but I think you've done an amazing job of putting it together and, uh, and, and we're all behind it. So we should be able to follow this. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I just want to point out it's a, it's a group effort. It's many, many in our staff mm -hmm. sitting down. And so thank you for that. We really appreciate that. Jamie, I would like to make a couple comments if I could. Yes, sir. Um, I learned early on this, uh, this city functions with some awfully good people who really care about the city, and uh, I appreciate that greatly. I also appreciate being able to communicate frankly, uh, to be able to talk about things that are going on. I have one 20,000-foot uh, observation, sure. uh, and this is old optimistic Ed. As yes. you all know, I... Uh, I don't uh, say that I'm the most conservative guy in the world. Uh, Jamie is very conservative, and Stan tells me he's more conservative, and I understand that. But this year uh, has been a tough year. We went in quickly. You all did an awesome job of reducing our expectations by 45%. And right now, we're pretty close right on. But I'm seeing a little bit of an uptick in some of the figures, and I'm really anxious to see what happens before year end. From 20,000 feet looking down with my optimism for 2021, I would say that we were closed down for four months in 2020, but I hope we're not closed down for four months in 2021. And so is there the possibility that we would want to think a little bit more optimistically about 2021 than we are showing now in the tourism area particularly? And that's where 83% of our income comes from. So that just, that's just a comment. Uh, uh, just looking at it from uh, my perspective. And uh, uh, I would hope that 2021 uh, will be better than 2020. And a couple, three or four months from now, we'll know a lot more. So, but we have to deal with what we have. And this is an awesome job that you've done. Thank you. And I, I certainly hope we do better as well. And I think that if you plan for maybe the worst and the best happens, we're just that much better. So I think that is very good. Thank you so much for that. Anybody else? I want to commend you um, and your team, Jimmy, and all the department heads, really. I've sat on this long enough that I know all the work and the effort that goes into this. And how people in one department are willing to give up something so that somebody else in another department can have something that's really needed. And I mean, just just the teamwork and really the, the guiding uh, focus, I think, for everything is what's the best thing for our city? And I think as long as we keep that as our number one priority, what's the best thing for our city as a whole? I think we're going to be OK. I love this book. I wish we could make people make it mandatory for people to have to read it, because I think there'd be a lot of less, uh, a lot less misunderstandings about what's going on at the city if people would take the time to read that. Um, the only thing um, that that I would suggest is um, sometimes, um, you know, we have a we have something that that's a little thicker like this, and people tend to not read it. If there was a, like an executive view or an executive summary that 
you, it's more at a glance, you know. Um, sure, we've done that Marketing before. is now, you know, if yep. you see, notice things, two minute read, five minute read, whatever. People are more willing to read something or look at something if it's, they're not gonna have to invest a sure. lot of time in it. Yes. And so is there something we could do that could be a three to five minute read or visual or something that could hit some of these high points? Absolutely. And, so that people would get a better idea. We've done that before. Um, um, so certainly I can just bring that out and it's more like a, just a two pager that has kind of like a red light, green light, yellow light, yellow's caution and green is good to go. And for more information, read the book, right? Absolutely, yeah. We've done that before, so if that'll be helpful, we can do something like that even quarterly um, if that's helpful for you Well, I all. just think if you're trying to get people like the general population mm -hmm. to read or understand or whatever. I think being able to give them something that they, like I said, two minute, three minute, sure. five minute is, most people are willing to invest that amount of time into something to, to learn something. That's good to know. But you know, when you see a thicker magazine or whatever, maybe yeah. they're not so willing. We've, so everybody's busy, yeah. everybody's got a, a million things that they've got to do and stuff. So, sure. but I just think you do such good, we do such good work and we do such good things and we manage things so well. It's just a shame that people don't get, don't realize that, so. We'll we'll put it together again so that if that's helpful for y'all, y'all can see it. We we used to do them, and then we figured, well, we're just doing all of these things that we're not even sure people are reading, so we started cutting some out. But I'll bring. So it I think back we up. would all have to do our part and make sure that we're encouraging people <laughs> yeah. to read it, and if there's questions or whatever, sure. sharing that, being able. So I think it would take a a commitment from all of us to say yes. If we had that available, we'd be sharing that with our civic groups or whatever to make sure that that we're carrying that message out in the community absolutely well. and those things i like doing those certainly we'll do that anybody else have anything else to add anything um so that is a picture and we got done quicker than i had anticipated which is fine but with that is a picture of the budget we're going to be presenting at the september 24th meeting we will be going through it in more depth. We will be showing you um, a little bit more, but this gives you a really good overview and where to start. Julie, I know we're meeting and we're gonna get you caught up to speed in next week, but but um, this will help give you an overview and help, hopefully maybe the right questions and the discussion there when everybody is here um, to just uh, help direct the city for the future. That's the biggest thing for me is not only looking at it short term, um, maybe this year and next year, but looking at the long-term effects that right now plays on that, that's important for me. It always has been, and if y'all get tired of me saying that, that's fine too, I won't, but I just wanted to make you all aware that this year for COVID, obviously it's hit everybody so hard, and it's just important that we just rebound and then react to how we've rebounded. So I think that's great. Anyway, thank you all. Unless you have any more questions, I think that we're pretty much done. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Buckley, you actually, when you press the button, it mutes you. So you just speak right into the microphone without pressing the button, and it goes out. We, we couldn't hear you on the feed as well. Oh. So when you, when you speak, you don't have to press the button, actually. It, it'll, it'll go all the way through. Oh, I see. Okay. That's to mute. It's kind of backwards. It's, it's it. slightly confusing. <laughs> you don't have to repeat all that. I think the gist, it's okay. I just wanted to let you know. Can you repeat back my question? So what the question was, the water sewer fund and looking at the reserve balance. Yeah, I'm reserved. And um, do we have a feel on what we need to do to help that? Is that what you're talking about? I'm wondering, what are you seeing that it's continuing down where some of the other funds are actually starting to recover by 2022? 
Yes, yeah, so that's a little bit about what we were talking about earlier when I went through the uh, the water rate um, and the sewer rate and how I said that we had anticipated in the numbers a 2% water increase and a 7% sewer increase. And that fund is really dependent on the water and the sewer rates and those kind of things. Um, and so that's what we looked at. We tried to balance the revenues and the expenditures out because water sewer fund for COVID was one of the funds that was hurting the most. It actually fell as a result of COVID below the 20%. And so what our goal was to try to balance it and get it moving back to where we can balance that reserve out. So it's highly dependent upon the water rates and the sewer rates to do that. Yeah, I was just hoping that people understood the rates have been down for so long. We, yes, sir. We've got to catch up to the real world. Absolutely. Um, and and there's, th there's that's two, the key. There's two items that uh, we, we always, Either unfortunately, way. we always try to live in the now. But if we also remember that with water sewer, for the last two years, we've actually seen their consumption going down. Uh, last year was not anyone here's fault, but we had such massive flooding throughout the state that there were a lot of people that couldn't even get here. So our tourism dollars were down. Mm -hmm. uh, that impacted that fund. And then this year we had COVID where we were literally closed for four months. So that uh, made an, another difficult impact on their reserves. And then we uh, unfortunately have had, what, where are we at, Mike? Five major water leaks. <laughs> uh, that we've had to deal with this year, which has uh, taken considerable money. And uh, when I say major water leaks, I'm talking about 16 to 24 inch lines. So it, it's been kind of a, a triple whammy for them. So absolutely that uh, we do have to, uh, again, and I am, Jamie and I, honestly, when we get in a room, there's a dark cloud, I think, that follows <laughs> us on who could be more conservative. But um, it, we are, Truly hopeful, and, and I, I really believe this. I said it yesterday that I think next year will be better than we anticipate it to be. Uh, and I have a, 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 my own uh, down to earth. I, I, Jamie and I have a bit of a joke that uh, we have between us where I call her world voodoo. And uh, I don't mean that. I just, I, I will tell you that they are amazing. And this year has shown it even more with uh, their projections uh, and how our finances are going to go. Uh, but next year, uh, actually the end of this year, we're going to see the aquarium open. Uh, Aldi's is opening in November. Hobby Lobby. Uh, Hobby Lobby is getting ready to open. Uh, we have some uh, other, uh, actually we have quite a few building permits that have been applied for. Uh, so nobody's sitting here and saying that uh, the city of Branson is, is just setting, resting on our, our laurels and, and not doing things to uh, bring additional business and revenue into the city. And with that, we'll, when the tourists, and I think we're really going to see this, uh, that folks are going to be able to get out of their homes, we'll see tourism increase, we'll see that water consumption increase as well as sewer, and it will help to bring that up. It's just... Right now, it's the struggling account and the struggling fund. One more question. Just, just, just a comment. And uh, as we move towards the 24th, uh, these committees and the, and the board, everyone is going to have are going to be faced with difficult choices uh, as it relates to the budgets. But I wanted to just personally and. Uh, on behalf of those people who live in Branson, thank everyone, all the departments and the leadership for the positive way that they are dealing with this. And, and moreover, I wanted to thank the existing and former leadership for adopting priority-based budgeting, which has provided Jamie and the rest of the city with the tools they need to really get us in the position we're in now, which is much better than a lot of other parts of the country. So for that, I, I want to just thank them and also to, to remind everyone to keep in mind for priority-based budgeting to work, we have to stick with it. And it sometimes means making choices based on those scores that we may not really like. 
So uh, uh, in, we just need to be thinking uh, that we need to allow the system to work. That's it, but thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. One more thing to remember, if you remember in the physical health tool, when we put that together, uh, not the physical health tool, I apologize, the COVID physical financials that we brought before you all, we made the statement that for every month we're down, it's going to take five to six months to recover. The financials are showing that. And so that's something that's realistic. So when we talk about making short-term decisions that affect the long-term, we're going to have a couple of years, and it's going to take us to recover. So, um, yes, I'm very hopeful that Christmas is going to be fantastic, and the next couple of years are going to be awesome. And I love the city. I raised my family here. absolutely love it. I'm very thankful for it. So I just wanted to make, sh make you all aware that we did those calculations based off of our cash flow and based off of the long-term effects that the cash flow would have, but they're really ringing true right now. So... Every month that we were down, it's going to take about five to six months to recover. That stands true even throughout this whole process. Any other comments? Is there a motion to adjourn? So I moved. Motion. Motion's been made to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. second. Committee meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>